so bubbly and golden brown, really cheesy and nice and saucy. Hi guys, today we are gonna make a delicious three cheese vodka sauce pepperoni Sicilian. It is to die for. It's really the pizza of the season right now. It's so good. You're gonna absolutely love it. We're gonna get right into making it because we're gonna start with a dough, which is so easy and so simple. I am making a smallish one, like a half of a sheet pan, um, but I'm making the dough. It's double the amount, so it makes two because one of them I'm gonna make classic margarita style for Mia because she loves it, and I will walk you through that as well. So you're kind of getting two for one here. You're getting a beautiful Sicilian uh, with pepperoni, like I said, vodka sauce, and then you're gonna get a classic sort of margarita style because the kid loves it and I aim to please. So let's get started with the dough. We are gonna use very basic ingredients. We're gonna make a great pizza dough. It's gonna make two Sicilians, like I said, smaller ones, but they're great. Flour, salt, sugar, instant yeast. That's all you'll need. You're gonna add that to the bowl of a standing mixer. Now, if you wanted to make one big Sicilian, like a 16 by 16, which was what I have uh, in my Sicilian pan, that's the size of my Sicilian pan, um, that this is all you need. This would be great. But like I said, two smaller ones because that's what we do. To this, you're gonna add some warm water. Now remember, I'm using instant, which means I don't need to proof it. If you were using active dry yeast, this would be the time to add it to your warm water with a little bit of sugar, like a teaspoon, and leave it there for like five, six minutes to you know, blossom and proof. But we don't need to do that since it's instant. And for those that ask, I use the SAF brand, S-A-F. I get it on Amazon, <laughs> like I get everything else. You need your water, a drizzle of olive oil to make it nice and elastic, and yum. I'm just gonna pop this baby on with a dough hook, and I'm gonna let it knead until it comes together on medium speed, about three to five minutes, and I'll show you what it looks like when it is there. That is beautiful. Tacky, but not wet, which is wet. Ah! Get out of there, which is what we want. Really tacky, not really sticky, because you see if I, if I do that, it kind of comes off. Um, but good. I'm gonna just dump this the whole thing right into an oil bowl. I don't need to knead it or anything. This is extremely simple and versatile. Uh, you can make any pizza that you want with this. The dough is absolutely foolproof and wonderful, um, and it comes out perfect every single time. Just make sure it's coated with that oil. Beautiful! I'm gonna cover this baby up with some plastic wrap, stick it somewhere warm, um, It'll rise in about an hour to an hour and a half. Uh, you want it to be about doubled in volume, if not even just a little bit more. And in the meantime, while that happens, I'm gonna clear up and get some stuff done and then we make the sauce because we are making it from scratch and it's so easy. Um, and then we proceed. You can see that my dough has risen very well. I'm just gonna sprinkle a little bit of flour on my work surface. I have two half sheet pans here. Uh, because I'm gonna make two smaller ones. But like I told you earlier, if you wanted to make one big one, 16 by 16 Sicilian, this is great. But I'm making two smaller ones because I'm gonna make one plain and then one spicy vodka. So I'm gonna just cut this in half. I don't need to re-knead it or anything, okay? Both of my sheet pans are oiled. Smoosh it around a little bit. It'll fit, you just have to be patient. Perfect, don't add too much flour. Look how quickly that works. You know what I'm saying? If it doesn't fit perfectly in the corners. Nobody hears. <laughs> if you have anybody in your life that's gonna come over with a ruler to make sure everything fit perfectly in there, then you might wanna just consider kicking them out because these are perfect. All I'm going to do right now, and they'll relax and we'll be able to maneuver them around in the corners when they're done. Um, all I'm gonna do right now is cover these loosely with a kitchen towel, plastic wrap, whatever your heart desires, and let them rest for another like half hour, 45 minutes. You want them to be risen a little bit more. And in the meantime, now we're gonna finally get going on making their vodka sauce. So it's fresh and it's delicious. Tomatoes from the garden, they're gonna be the base. It's gonna be so good. So I'm gonna clean up, get those set aside, and we make the sauce. I missed a tomato. Okay, so we've got some cherry tomatoes that I've halved. Now remember, this is gonna make enough sauce for one of the pizzas. So if you're making the full 16 by 16, just double the sauce. 
okay? So we're gonna need two cups of halved cherry tomatoes, a couple of shallots, a few cloves of garlic, a little bit of olive oil. You're gonna take your shallots and garlic, add them to your skillet with the olive oil. It's heating up, it doesn't have to be super hot right away. It'll actually give the, the shallots and garlic a chance to infuse into the oil. And then you'll need tomato paste, basil, hot pepper flakes, vodka, and you need a little bit of heavy cream and some salt and basil. Did I say basil? You need basil too. If you don't wanna use vodka, don't. Just skip it all together, make a beautiful spicy blush sauce. All the vodka actually, what does the vodka do, right? Because the vodka is pretty flavorless. Vodka, all it does, it's kind of make all of the flavors in the sauce really shine. It makes the flavors really prominent. I don't know how it works, but somehow the vodka just makes the flavor come out more and more um, intense. And it's true, because I've done it with and without. Maybe it's hugely a scientific thing, but that's how vodka sauce works. That's what vodka does in your vodka sauce, at least in my experience. So all I'm doing right now is just sauteing my shallots and my garlic, and then we will move on to the next step. Pinch of hot pepper flakes or two. We like ours really nice and spicy. Get that in there. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and add my cherry tomatoes. I'm gonna let those just sort of burst and cook for a few minutes. I'm gonna add a pinch of salt and a little bit of basil. And this is just gonna cook down. Come on, suck to my fingers. This is just gonna cook down. I could eat this just like this. Like I could let these cook for a few minutes, top it on some bread, happy. Um, but they're gonna, make even, they're gonna be even more delicious as a base for this vodka sauce, nice and fresh, just fantastic. I love it. A few minutes and then we add the vodka. Beautiful, I'm gonna add a little tomato paste. But yay much. I love those little squeezy tuby things. It keeps it nice and easy to store. Add your vodka, about a quarter cup. Let that bubble away for like a minute, I would say. Half a cup of heavy cream. And now you're just gonna keep this on low just to simmer for like 10 minutes. And in the meantime, you can get your cheeses ready. You can get everything ready to top your pizzas. I just need to hit this with a little bit more salt because the cream is quite sweet. The tomatoes are really sweet. These are our garden tomatoes and they are so good, so sweet, that it's hard to resist just eating them plain, just right off the vine. They're that good. So I'm just gonna keep this on low, nice and low, just to simmer for 10 minutes. Now get everything else ready. It's been about 45 minutes. That looks perfect. Oh, that looks so good. We're gonna do the, let's just do the vodka sauce first because this is really the, the main, the main uh, character here. Made a little too much sauce, but it's okay. It's great to keep on hand. Tap it with your sauce. Now typically, and I'm gonna do this with my plain, typically I would part bake this first. And I am going to, but I just need to put a little bit of sauce on each one. So we're gonna start with the vodka, just a little bit. Throw this in the oven, 450. It's gonna be in there a few minutes. And since we're making a plain one for Mia, let's get that in there as well. I've got some really lovely tomato sauce that I made. So top that with a little bit of sauce. It's got some nice chunks of garlic in there, but I am gonna take it out because sometimes that's a bit much for the kiddos. Just a nice thin layer. And we're gonna throw this into the oven for about five minutes as well. So get this one in, five minutes, and they both come out. All right, took it out, it's been in there five minutes. The other one's still in there, I'll take it out in just a second. Mmm, more vodka sauce. I love all the vodka sauce, please. My mouth is just salivating at this point. I've got a mixture here of Shaw Provolone, okay, and then some shredded mozz. 
just gonna just gonna do one of these oh this is so good this is just ridiculous how good this is you have to trust me it's like spicy it's really sharp from the provolone it's salty from the pepperoni it's just it's dynamite absolutely dynamite Beautiful. she goes back in for like another i don't know 10 15 minutes you know what it's like to cook and bake pizzas right each oven is different some ovens take longer than others the whole thing this little guy needs some more sauciness yes beautiful and some sliced mozz here you go beautiful I have some thick mozzarella that's good enough like that I'm just gonna go throw this back in for like I said another 10-15 minutes I'll show you what it looks like when it's done would you look at that listen no flop if you know you know but no flop <laughs> this is the pepperoni it came out like five minutes ago you want to let it cool you always want to put it like in a wire rack or something like that I put it right over my stove top because it kind of works like a wire rack, right? Um, it's beautiful. I don't know if you can see the bottom. It's probably a little bit difficult for you to see the bottom, but lovely golden brown color. Gorgeous. I don't like to keep my pizzas in the pan very long at all because it just kind of gets um, soggy at the bottom, right? Parmesan cheese for your third cheese on your pepperoni. We're going to do a little bit of basil topping because oh, it makes everything better. I feel like it's sort of a must on any pizza. And the warmth kind of warms it up right away. Mia is going to love this so much. It's her favorite and she will eat half the pizza. She's a picky eater, but when it comes to things that she likes, let me tell you, she does not skimp, okay? Rock, always, always, always. When you have toppings on your pizza, always rock your cutter. Look at that. Is that a slice of heaven or what? If when you rock it, rather than just kind of going with it, you keep the toppings on your slice. My mouth is watering. That is perfection. That is pizza heaven. I love pizza, so. <laughs> Wasn't meant to be. So hot. Wow. The mixture of the provolone with the sauce, with the pepperoni, absolutely dynamite. Go to laurieinthekitchen.com. I will have everything broken down for you. I hope you enjoy spending time with me. The recipe's there for you. I hope that you make it, especially if you've got fresh tomatoes from the garden. It's unbeatable. I will see you in the next one. Bye.